Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> How are you? Good. I couldn't hear you. Everyone sounds muffled yeah. this morning. <laughs> Gonna have to speak up and sing even harder this morning. Get that volume. Well, welcome to Living Branches Community Church. Welcome to those online who are joining us this morning. Um, we're just going to get going here. We're going to sing a song just to uh, kind of focus in and <clears throat> and uh, worship the Lord and just kind of be a sacrifice of praise to Him for just a couple minutes, and then we're going to have some prayer and announcements and then carry on with some music. But um, I'm seeing a, you know, a lot online, not just on our church connections page, but, you know, people asking for prayer and people maybe kind of feeling a little bit down and and it's uh we were talking about that this morning that that seems to be this time of year you know around christmas where there's some depression and there's some anxiety and there's some different things creeping in in people's lives and i really think that's because we're supposed to be celebrating the birth of our savior and the enemy is going to do everything he can to mess with that so um I know for me this week, I have was saying this morning, just about every day this week, at least once, I've had to tell myself that it's going to be okay, <laughs> you know, and uh, whether it's financial stuff or it's um, family stuff or whatever's going on. So uh, I know this is a difficult time of year for lots of people, you know, remembering lost loved ones or or going through financial things or, or stress things at work or family or whatever, so... We just want to take an opportunity here to just, I'm going to pray, and we're going to sing a song of, of praise and just honor to God, and then we'll carry on this morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much, Lord, for today. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to come freely to worship you, uh, to be able to gather to be able to come online. Lord, we thank you for technology. We thank you for the ability to come online and to watch from, from home. And we want to stay safe. We want to follow the rules. We want to do what we're supposed to be doing, God. But more than anything, Lord, we want to worship you. And we want to ask this morning that you would come against the spirit of fear. You would come against the spirit of depression. You would come against the spirit of anxiety of tension, of family problems, anything that the enemy is trying to do, that, Lord, we would cry out to you <clears throat> for your help through those times. I thank you that our connections page is so valuable in that way, that we can put a prayer request on there and we know we'll be backed up in prayer. That's such a powerful thing. Just asking for help is a huge defeat of the enemy. So, Lord, we come against the power of the enemy in Jesus' name this morning. This time of year would be a time to rejoice and be happy and glad. Be thankful for what we, what we have and who's in our lives. We thank you, God, for that. Would you bless this morning's service, Lord, as we focus on you, as we worship you? Would we choose to do that, God? Through hard times, worship is a choice. I'm sure it wasn't easy for Paul in prison to worship, but he made a choice to do it. And when we do that, Lord, walls can literally come crumbling down. So we want to worship you this morning. We want to honor you, God. Would you help us to do that, Lord? Just help us to set everything aside. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are 
way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Because you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, that is who you are. 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 Yes, that is who you are. 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 You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. can have a seat. You know, what an amazing place to start to this service off is to really recognizing who God is. He's the way maker. And he makes, he has miracles in our lives. I think we can look every day in our lives and see something that is amazing and powerful. God is a miracle working God. This morning, as Amy and I were praying before the service, before we got here, one of the things that we were praying about is, is just that worship in and of itself is not about singing, but worship extends out of the heart. And when we start to worship, you know, and, and I understand it, it's not the easiest with a mask on, and yet it's out, it, we got to look at the heart. When we start to worship, it builds up from here and, and we start to recognize and to honor God in our words. But it starts in the heart. And then we started to, I start to think about this whole area of the dew point. And I'm not sure if the dew point is when the earth is warmer than the, the air or the air is warmer than, anyways, somewhere along the line where there's that dew point and then the dew comes. And what happens when we start to worship the Lord 
from our hearts, that's when all of a sudden the dew point comes. And it starts to, the presence of God starts to infiltrate and fall upon us. That's when the fog comes through and, and you, you drive through all the fog. Well, that's, that's the same thing. When the God's presence comes, it's like the cloud that came into the temple. As the cloud comes because hearts are turned towards God and they cried out to Him. So I just want to encourage you guys this morning and those online, and, and I understand online, it's going to be completely different. There's, lots, there's still lots of room here for you to come. And I want to invite you to, to, if you can, to come, to come. But I want you to know that when you're online and you're worshiping too, is you're turning your heart towards the Lord and, and let that dew point, let the presence of God just infiltrate your home. Let it just come. This morning we're going to pray for Emmanuel Lutheran Church this morning. And, and as they talked and as they shared from their own heart, this is what some of the things that they said, please pray for guidance for the play school because they have a play school in their place. Not the easiest. And the up-and-coming pageant. Because they're going to be showing it at, on, um, in the parking lot at Home Hardware. And I'm not exactly sure what the date is. 12th uh, the 12th and 13th. So they're going to be showing it on, on uh, the big screen. So if you can, you know, let's support them. And go and, and watch. Everybody sits in their car. They can watch it. But it's again, it's, a, it's bringing this forward. And we just want to pray for them that they, God would give them strength. Because he says COVID is strict and they are struggling to keep up with the changes. And how many can, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's hard to keep up with the changes. It's like every time you try and take a, to move, you're pivoting this way and then you're pivoting this way. And you're just about done with pivoting because you just don't know where to go. And so it's that real struggle to keep going. They also said, please pray that the government doesn't shut down our churches. Do you know we have a privilege of coming to church? We have the privilege of coming, even though we're, it's mandatory to wear masks, we have the privilege to come to church. Manitoba and BC are shut right down. You cannot go to church. But there's something about seeing people face to face, eye to eye, not, not you know... But there's something about looking at people and seeing them, and there's a relationship. And if all of a sudden we're stopped, guess what happens? It be, it, you become lonely, and the, the discouragement and depression sets in. So it's really important to come and be face-to-face -face with people. But that's what we need to be praying, that the government doesn't shut down our church and their churches. And then they also said that... Uh, that they can, as a congregation, keep Christ in Christmas. Do you know that's a really big deal because when all this is happening, where does your mind go? It doesn't go to Christ. We don't think of Christ in Christmas. We just get caught up with this pandemic. Can we just, for a little bit, even today, let's get our eyes off of the pandemic, get our eyes off of the mask, get our eyes, and let's get our eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's get our eyes onto Jesus. And then let's see what God can do. So we're going to be praying for them here right away. Um, and also, just to remind everybody, just some of the things uh, we know already of churches where people have gone in to just to check and make sure churches are following rules. And you know, we might find it really difficult, but you know what? If we can walk through this with grace one towards another, having grace as we walk is so big. So we have grace, and as we come and meet, we need to make sure that we wear our masks and, and, and follow the protocol in that sense. But there are churches where people, the AHS has actually gone into and have looked and to, to see. And what type of a witness is it if the church, and, and this, isn't, it is, this isn't going against us, our ability to worship, it doesn't change us that we can't remember Christ in Christmas so that's not against the word of God but what does it tell the world around us when the church refuses we need to be very careful so let's just walk this through with grace and love people because they know we are Christians by our love amen so those are some of the things that we're going to be praying for is there other things that we need to, other things that are happening? 
we need to pray about? No? How is uh, Lisa's... Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Take a piece out, and then everything else has to shift to figure out where it is. So we just continue to pray. Well, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for the chance that we can come and we can worship together. And I pray, Father, that as we would worship, as we would lift up our eyes towards you and that, Father, our hearts respond towards you and that, Father, we give that to you, that, God, that your presence would just come and just fill this place. Lord, would it be as like a cloud of your presence to come? And Father, for those that are online right now, as they are bowing their heads, as they are listening, that, Lord, that they too would turn their hearts and their eyes towards you and that, Lord, your presence would fill their room where they are. And that, Father, this isn't just another TV show where they're watching on screen, but it's a place where they can come and they can meet with you and they can worship you, that they can turn to you. God, I pray, Lord, let your presence fall. Father, we lift up uh, the, the Evangelical Lutheran Church, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, and we ask you, Lord, that you would be with Brian as he leads this church. That, God, did you give him strength and wisdom and then on his leadership as they discuss and they, as they try and keep up with all the changes. That, God, that they would have wisdom. Father, as that church uh, goes and they start to promote the, the birth of Christ through the, the uh, live nativity or online nativity basically being shown. But, God, I just pray, Lord, let it be a blessing. Lord, let it reach the hearts and lives of people in our community. The Father, as they've missed uh, being able to do this uh, in person, but God, that the, the very same words and the very same message that this same Jesus, who is born today, has come as the Savior of the world. And I just pray your blessing over that and that, God, it would reach many people. Father, as they uh, even continue with the uh, changes within their own church and with their play school. God, I pray, Father, for them. Lord, I pray for clarity and, Lord, also the ability to make the decisions that are going to be beneficial and helpful. Lord, as they reach into this community in that way, Lord, bless them and encourage them. And God, again, as they ask that the churches that they as a congregation, but I just lift up all the congregations, all the churches in our community. Lord, help us to keep Christ in Christmas. Lord, it's so easy to get caught walking in a different direction, but Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. Lord, right now, I just, just want to lift up those who are struggling physically, emotionally, financially. Right now, Lord, would you be with them? Lord, that they might be strengthened and that healing would come. So just think of Lisa, Lord, right now. Lord, let healing come. Restore her today. Strengthen her today. And others, Lord, we just lift that up before you. And we just welcome you in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have the um, Advent candle written, uh, red and the candle lit. So Don and... Desiree will come. In this second week of Advent, we remember the peace we have in Christ. In Luke 1, 76 to 79, Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, prophesied this after John's birth. And you will be with child. You will will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercies of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. It is also known as Bethlehem's Candle, it reminds us of Mary and Joseph's journey of faith and how it brought peace on earth to a world in desperate need of a savior. 
As we light this candle today, we look with the hope for the day that Christ's peace will reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. Uh, just a, a couple other announcements, I guess, quick. We're, some of you might be wondering what's going on with the Ginger Snap concert. It's, of course, not happening. Um, but I'm working on doing a living room concert from my house on the 16th in the evening. So there'll be some more information out on that here in the next day or two. So just stay tuned for that and love to have you tune in. It's going to probably be about an hour long that evening, starting at about 7 o'clock. And so love to have you tune in and say hi on the Facebook. We're just going to go live on Facebook. And I think me and my daughters are going to sing a few songs together and stuff. So it should be a good thing. We just want to kind of try to spread some joy <laughs> through this time and still do something that way. So uh, the other really neat thing is um, after the Parade of Lights was canceled, um, Trevor and I were talking a little bit and we decided that we were going to do our church float and my float and drive around town uh, at some point before Christmas. And then in talking with the Rocky Kinsman Club this last week, the Kinsmen are going to join us as well as Johan from the Riverview Campground. So there'll be four floats driving around on, the, on December 18th and 19th. Mm. So we're going to do Highway 11 South on the Friday night and north of Highway, oh sorry, Highway 11A and South on the Friday night and then 11A North on the Saturday night to split it up a little bit. So again, there'll be some more info coming out on that. But just be in prayer about that. We want to spread joy to this community. We want to, if nothing else, have people take their minds off whatever's going on in their life for five minutes. Um, and just we want to honor God through that. So we're blessed to have the kinsmen involved and Johan and stuff. And that's as big as it's going to be, but we're going to have some fun doing it. So would you stand? We're going to have a little fun now.
tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born that jesus christ is born that jesus Thank you, Rocky Mountain House. No, <laughs> oh, we got to have some fun, folks. We got to have some fun together. And it is a blast to worship our God. Amen. It is a blast. All right, I have to catch my breath for a second. Wow. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Our Father, who art in heaven, oh, the rocks cry out your fame. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. But deliver us with your hand In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray Father we pray and I will sing, sing a new song I will sing, sing a new song I will sing, sing a new song
through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. The sun's shining down on me, the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. With every blessing you pour out. Turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Yes, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, because every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise, when the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. 
I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Well, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Well, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. So I am trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Lord, fill us with your joy, Jesus. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. For you alone are worthy. For you alone.
I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Now your mercy, now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new, Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day I needed rescue I needed rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan, and you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, and your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you called my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the dark. To your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Well, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Your name forever will 
will praise your name forever. We'll praise your name forever. Christ the Lord. We'll praise, we'll praise your name. God, thank you for your great love and your grace and mercy. It covers everything. Your forgiveness, Lord. We only need to ask for it with a repentant heart. And you give it freely. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, would you Speak to us through your word this morning, God. That we might be challenged and changed for the better. Thank you in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. You guys can have a seat. I don't know if you noticed, but as we sang the songs, in between, it says, we give you all the glory. You alone are worthy. And you see, what an incredible spot to, to come back down to is to recognize who Jesus is. I'm just trying to get... Well, this morning we're back to our series that we're going to be doing out of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Just want to make sure this is working. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to, if you turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9, and uh, we were, last week we started this series, and uh, within this series we start talking about, uh, and, this, and God would send a son who his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And this week, we're, we're going to be, as we walk through this, we started off last week with that Wonderful Counselor. And we'll just quickly go through that in a moment. But uh, each week as we walk through this, we want to remember who Jesus is. And, and when he says that his name will be called, it's not his name. That wasn't his name, but it was, he was dealing with a characteristic, an aspect of who Jesus, this Messiah, this one would be as he came into this world. And when the, when the angel told Mary, you'll call him the name Jesus, 
which means Savior, Deliverer. And you see, we need to remember this whole time of Christmas is what is it about? It's about Jesus, the one. And, and how the name Jesus or the name, uh, who Jesus was, how he, his aspects of his character come, is brought out in these areas of Wonderful Counselor. Last week we talked about the name Wonderful Counselor and it's, we used the Hebrew uh, words pala ya'atz, which means a counselor, a teacher who is a cut above all the others. We saw how Jesus was so much different than all the others. He, when he spoke, he spoke with authority and with power. His words made sense and it made about, brought about a change and a difference. And when Jesus was referred to as a wonderful counselor, it didn't mean that he was just giving good advice. You know, we think, we think counselors are just those who just, here's some good advice. This is what maybe you should do. You know, Jesus just didn't give good advice, amen? He gave us the truth that would penetrate and set us free. He came to give us truth that changes our lives. He brought freedom. It means that he understood the things that were beyond the ability of our own finite mind to comprehend. See, Jesus knew. He took what was the Father's and he revealed it. He knew the Father. And he spoke the words to us. He knew the things that only God could know. He knows the ways of God. He understands God's plans and purposes. Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, was one who we could trust and who by virtue of his great knowledge and understanding is abundantly qualified to guide and to direct us each step of the way. Guide and direct our lives. Do you know even today, we need God to guide and direct our lives. Amen? We need to hear what Jesus would say today. How would we respond today to those who would rise up against us? How would we respond to the things that the government would do? How are we to respond? And we're called to pray for our leadership. We're called to pray for them because you know what? I, was, I really appreciate what Jason Kenney said, that he said he made a mistake. Do you know how often we hear the politicians say, I made a mistake? We don't get that. He said, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have shut everything down. And I, I just, I'm thankful that J Jason Kenney said that. And we should, we should respect that and, and say thank you. But you see, we have one who could guide, our direct, and guide and direct our lives. Someone who is never confused or makes mistakes. I'm thankful that Jesus is never confused or, can, or makes mistakes. Someone who knows exactly what to do. Because we don't know. God, I don't know what to do. God, I, I'm, I'm struggling. What do I do about this situation or about this individual? God, how do we respond? And we need to turn around and say, God, how do you do it? And we can, Jesus can speak to us by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus, Jesus is seated in heavenly place, in, in heaven, beside his Father. But he sent his Holy Spirit for each one of us. And I don't know if you really understand the dynamics of the Holy Spirit, but how powerful the Holy Spirit is in us because before the Holy Spirit would only come upon the prophets at times. But Jesus says he's just not going to come upon you, but he'll be in you. And he'll direct you. And he'll take with the Father and reveal it. He'll open up the words of the scriptures and bring truth and revelation. You see, I'm so thankful that Jesus didn't just leave us alone trying to figure it out ourselves. Amen? He gave us his Holy Spirit. He knows exactly what to do and someone who will never leave us, lead us astray. But Jesus doesn't lead us astray. If we're listening, Jesus won't lead us astray. So today, we're going to start with Mighty God. I'm excited about this name of Jesus' characteristics of Mighty God because if you are listening to the, to the words of the songs, you're going to hear the story of the Mighty God the message of the mighty God. So let's, we're going to pray and then we're going to read Psalms 9 verses, or Isaiah 9 verses 1 to 7. So Father, as we come into this place, as we start to look at your word, I pray, Father, that you would bring revelation. Father, help us in this time of our struggles, in this time of our need, that God, that we get our eyes fixed on you and that we will see you as mighty God. Father, I pray for those who are struggling today that they would see you mighty in their lives. 
Father, would you work in each of our lives. Lord, open our eyes now and our ears to hear what you would say. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to take note of the, the uh, title that we have, To the Weak. To the Weak. I don't know about you, but so often I see myself, I'm, I'm, I'm weak. I'm weak in myself, and I need a mighty God. So Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 7, it says, Nevertheless, the gloom of the distressed land will not be like that of the former times when he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will bring honor to the way of the sea, to the land east of the Jordan, and to Galilee of the nations. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. You have enlarged the nation and increased its joy. The people have rejoiced before you as, the, as they rejoice at harvest time and as they rejoice when dividing spoils. For you have shattered their oppressive yoke and the rod on their shoulders, the staff of their oppressors, just as you did on the day of Midian. I want you to take note of those words. Just as you did on the day of Midian. For every trampling boot of battle and the blood, bloodied garments of war will be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child will be born for us. A son will be given to us. And the government will be on his shoulders. and He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. You know, 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah proclaimed that, they, that those who were captive, that God would send a deliverer. 700 years before, Israel, before Jesus was born, Isaiah wrote that they would be set free from their captives. And he said this in verse 3, he said that the people would rejoice at the harvest time. And that harvest time is when they got paid. You see, when they got the harvest and they would take it in and they get paid for their harvest. And that harvest time was really a matter of life and death because if they didn't get paid, then what happened was is they starved. They couldn't buy the things that they were needing. And so you can imagine how much joy they would have because when the payday came. How many times have you rejoiced because you got your payday? You know, I got paid today. Great! Now I can go and I can cover these debts or I can pay these things that I needed. I can go out and get my meal. You know, we don't struggle as much as that. You know, we, go, we think about it and go, oh, well, I'll just go out and buy. But you know, for them, it was really important. As a matter of life and death. But then in verse 4 it says this, that they would rejoice like they did when they were delivered out of the hands of Midian. Now if you were to take a look back, and, I, and, and you could just write this down because this is, this is the story of what happened in Midian. And it was in Judges chapter 6. The Midianites came and they, they came against Israel and they were fighting against Israel. And during this time Midian would attack them stealing their food and their animals and their tools and their jewels. The Israelites tried year after year to try and defeat them. They tried to overcome their, their, uh, the army that would come against them, the Midianites. And they continued to fail. It was impossible for them, hum, humil, humanly impossible given the lam, limited size and numbers and their resources. The Midianites were just superior. And they held them in bondage. They kept them down. And they did, the, the Israelites did just like we would do. Is they, they would try with all their might. They would do everything that they could do. All their power that they could ever do. And they would work and try again. They never could get through. But unfortunately, we do exactly the same thing because we will do everything in our own might. Except turn to God. And when everything else fails, they cried out to the Lord, God, deliver us. And they did that with all the, all the times when they went into, into captivity. They would eventually cry out to God, God, help us. God, deliver us. God, bring us out of this bondage. And God did. God did send a deliverer. 
And that deliverer was Gideon. Do you remember Gideon in the wine press? When, the, when, when he was hiding and the angel came, Almighty oh, man of valor. And he goes, who, me? I'm the least of my, my clan. I'm the least of the king. We're, our clan is the least in, our, in the province or in, the, in, our, in our culture. We're the least. How can you call me mighty? You see, it wasn't his might, but he was sending, God was sending Gideon in the might of his power, in the might of God's power to bring deliverance to the Israelites. That's what Gideon was looking towards, and that's what the angel was telling him. And I think when, when, when Isaiah wrote these words about the Israelites, and he said, you know, I'm going to send a deliverer. I wonder how many of them actually turned around and started to think about when God delivered them out of Egypt. When God delivered them right out of Egypt, and they cried out to God at that time, and, and then their voices were heard by God, and God sent Moses. And he delivered them with the ten plagues. Those ten plagues came and, 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 came and devastated Egypt. And God said, you know, I, I, I came to deliver. He sent Moses and Moses went in the, in the mighty hand of the Lord. He knew it's not his own strength, but he went. He said, and even Moses said, I can't even speak. God says, who gave you your mouth? Who gave you your tongue? Don't say you can't. But then he sent his brother. But you see, this is what happens is God wanted to deliver. And they went across. And even at the Red Sea, God delivered them across the Red Sea and caused the Red Sea to fall down upon the Egyptians that were coming against them. What was he doing? They cried out and he brought a deliverer. Could this be what they were considering when Isaiah wrote? God will send a deliverer. They cried out to him, but then he said his name will be called. What? Mighty God. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the characteristics of who this deliverer would be. Throughout Israel's history, they went into captivity because they walked away from God. I wonder how often we still live in captivity because we turn and we choose not to follow after God. God calls us to return. And he allows events to come about to call us back into, to return to him. And my heart goes out and, and constantly I've been praying that God, those who are backslidden, those who have walked away, God, they're walking in, bro in brokenness and darkness. God, would you draw them back? And even during this time of the pandemic, we can pray, God, would you use this as a way that would bring people back to know, your, to, to know you and to walk after you. So from then on, after, those seven, after Isaiah wrote, for 700 years, they were looking for this Messiah. They were looking for this one that would be the mighty God. And that's what we celebrate during this Christmas season is the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his Son so that we could have eternal life. So as we, just like we did last time, when we looked at Wonderful Counselor, we're going to look at Mighty God. And this word, Mighty God, is El Gabor. El Gabor. If you don't remember it, that's okay. I don't remember too much Hebrew either. But I wanted just to give you some understanding. The word El is short for Elohim, which is the most common name used for God in the Old Testament. The very first time it's used is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Elohim, God created. And whenever it's shortened down to it's, it's these two words, El, it is describing, it always describes the Mighty One. So when it comes down to El, it's the Mighty One. So if you were to take a look through this, and then, and then Gabor means mighty. Kind of strange that they would use El, the mighty one, 
and Gabor. But Gabor, this word is a one that modifies the mighty one. The one that it, the, it modifies it, it brings clarity and gives you better understanding of the mighty one. So if you were to take a look at this, Isaiah 9 verse 6 would say this, and he will be called the mighty, mighty one. He would be called the mighty, mighty one. How many need the mighty, mighty one in your life today? Those are online. Do you need the mighty, mighty one today? Oh, we need him. Jesus was revealed as the mighty, mighty one through his life, through his death, and through his resurrection. Jesus was revealed through his life. Jesus lived his life and he showed himself as the Messiah, demonstrating his power, first of all, over nature. Do you know when we start to look at all the miracles that took place, the very first miracle that Jesus did was what? Turning the water into wine. He had power over the nature. And as you go through and you hear the stories, how he fed the 5,000 with the five loaves and two fishes. As he fed them with all of these, he revealed his power over this by creating more. And then there is the one in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, when the disciples got in the boat and they were going across the Lake of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. And, the, and Jesus was sleeping. And they came and said, don't you understand? We're all going to die. And so Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the storm. And he said what? Peace, be still. His power was revealed through those words, peace, be still. What did the disciples say? Who is this? They had been with Jesus for a while now. And then they said, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Oh my, he's powerful. I haven't met anybody else who could command the wind and the waves with using their own name. He showed his power over diseases. When many came to get healed by Jesus, he healed the sick and the lame. He healed those who had come to him, those who had leprosy. Nobody had ever heard of that. Nobody had ever heard of a man uh, that was born lame, and he, and he raised him up. Nobody's ever heard of these things. And yet Jesus revealed his power over disease. And even when the woman with the issue of blood came up behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus turned around and he said, who touched me? And why did he say that? Because he said, I have felt power going out. You see, the very power of Jesus was going out to heal the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus had power over the demons. Even when he walked, on the, he told the demons they would cry out and he'd tell them not to say anything because they knew who he was. And even the demoniac, when he, when he came to Jesus, he fell at Jesus he called, and he said, don't send us into the, into the abyss. You see, they understood the power of Jesus' name. They saw who Jesus was. And he revealed power over the demons. He also revealed power oh, to forgive sin. And how when, when they came and Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He was forgiving. And when the, when the lame man came and was, lay, was, was uh, dropped down in front of Jesus, the words Jesus said was, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees and the things, what? Who can forgive sins? What do you mean? He says, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to take up your mat and walk? But that you might know that the Son of Man is, has the power to forgive sins. He said to the man, take up your mat and walk. You see, the Son of Man was a term of Jesus. And Jesus showed his, his he revealed his power over death. Not just when he, rose, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, but it was also he, when the woman brought, was bringing out her son and they were carrying her son and Jesus went up and ro raised him from the dead and said be, to, to come alive. And guess what? He did. But Jesus revealed his power over death. 
Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Peter was speaking to the, to the household of Cornelius. And he said this, You know the events that took place throughout all Judea. So you see Cornelius and all those, they had already seen everything. They knew the events that had gone on. And he says, Beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And how he went about doing good and healing all who were under the tyranny of the devil because God was with him. I'm always amazed that wherever Jesus went, he healed them all. He had compassion on all. Oh Lord, that we would have that very same heart for people today. Do you know that there's a great correlation with the great, com the great commission and the great commandment? If you have know the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, then it would be easier to go and tell the world. You see, there's a great correlation because Jesus had great compassion for people. He went and he told them and he healed all those that were sick. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8 it says the Son of God came or was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works. What were the works of the devil? We had this big sign up here, remember? To be bold, put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because our, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and those things. The devil would come to destroy us, to de discourage us, to make us unfruitful and, and, and kill our lives, kill our faith. Jesus said that he came to release the captives and he came to bring recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You see, Jesus came with power and he showed it through his life. But also Jesus revealed it through his death and through his resurrection. I just want to give you two scriptures. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 54 says this, When the centurion and those with him who were keeping a watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they were terrified. And they said to one another, Truly, this man was the Son of God. You see, as Jesus went to the cross... He even said to his disciples, could I not call 10,000 angels and would not my father send them to set me free? And he would not for he kept and he walked in power over everything as he walked to the cross. Jesus revealed his power through his death. And when he hung on the, cro on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And even then, he did not walk away but he, he held there and then he said it is finished and he overcame death when he rose from the dead Romans chapter 1 and verse 4 Jesus Christ our Lord who was a descendant of David according to the flesh and was appointed to be the powerful son of God according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead Jesus revealed that he was powerful through the resurrection of the dead. So when we walk through all of this, what does that mean? Jesus revealed himself as the Messiah through his life. Jesus revealed himself as the Messiah through his death and through his resurrection. But what does that mean for us? Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 tells us this. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. He's the same today. Today. I want you to hear it. It's today and tomorrow. Jesus is the same one today. He's the same mighty, mighty one today for all those who would put their faith and trust in him. Remember the title? To the weak, he is mighty God. I think we ought to come back to the realization that only when I'm weak, that's when I can become truly strong. 
the Apostle Paul had gone through a number of struggles, a number of problems. And we find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 4, and chapter 12. And I just want to read you a couple of them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, actually, I'm, I'm just going to turn to 2 Corinthians. You can do if you'd like, but it's, whoops. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, first of all, in verse 8. We don't want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of our affliction that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength so that even so that we even despaired of life itself. Could you imagine the pressure that was going on around him? And they despaired even of life itself. Today, in our world, there are many people who are despairing even of life itself. They are going through struggles like never before. And I find it very interesting that Paul even said this, that you know what? He didn't, he, he, he went through it. God didn't deliver him out of it, but he still went through it. God can deliver us out of our struggle. God can set us free. But God also wants to deliver us and work through the struggle. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it says in verse 8, we, were, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We sang that song. I, I, I don't, Nikki didn't even know I had that ready. But you know, oppressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. You see, it's not just out, get us out of our problems, God. Get us out of it. But God, would you carry us through it as well? Why would he carry us through it what is the whole purpose of allowing us to go through the struggles interesting thought because you see in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9 Paul had been suffering Paul was going through some struggles and what did he do he, did, he does this God deliver me out from this God take me out three times he asked the Lord what did God say to him do you remember? My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. To the weak, he is mighty, mighty God. When God spoke these words to Paul, I wonder what Paul would think. Oh, my, really? Or would he be turning around and saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. That your strength is made perfect in my weakness. And boy, he says, I would be more glad to declare and talk about my weaknesses because then the power of Christ can be seen. So what is the purpose of all the struggles that we're going through except for this, that God's glory, God's power, God's might can be revealed through you and through me so that the world might know that there is someone greater and someone they can turn to. You see, if we didn't go through struggles and only the world, then they'd wonder what's up. But you see, when they see us going through the same struggles and they see us walking with our hope and trust in Jesus Christ, then that is a witness to them that Jesus is bigger than all our struggles. Amen? That almost, I, I, you know, I, I start, I, I've heard, I hear preachers say this, but I get almost to get excited about this. You know, I get this, this thought, God, you're bigger. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God, you're bigger than every mountain that I can or cannot see. God, you are bigger. You are the mighty, mighty one in me through your spirit. What is the purposes of these weaknesses? 
See, the weaknesses that Paul was taught, or what Paul was writing about, was not the weaknesses of sin, but about experiences and situations, circumstances and wounds that were hard to deal with. And he couldn't remove. You ask, where do you get that? Well, if you return to 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, Let's see if I can find it. No. I pled with the Lord. He said to me, My grace is sufficient, for my power is, is perfect in weakness. Therefore, I most gladly boast about all, all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure, verse 10, in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, Paul, he had said he, earlier in 2 Corinthians, here's all the things I despaired even of life, but here it is, all the hardships and the struggles. And yet now Jesus has said, I am the almighty God. I am the mighty, mighty one in you. Insults. What are insults? When people think of clever ways of making your faith and your lifestyle or your words look stupid or weird. When they make fun of your faith, Oh, you believe God for that? Oh, yeah, whatever. What about hardships? Circumstances forced upon you. Reversals of fortune against your will. This could refer to any situation where you feel trapped. You don't plan it or think it would be this way, but there you are, and it's hard. You are in the midst of this hardship. How many in our world today, in the church today, are going through hardships and the struggles, persecutions, wounds or abuses or painful circumstances or acts of prejudice or exploitation from people because of your Christian faith or your Christian moral commitments. It's when you are not treated fairly, you get a raw deal. Difficulties or troubles is the idea is one of pressure or crushing, or being weighed down, circumstances that tend to overcome you, and stress and tension. That seems, sounds like so much like our world. The waves come crashing over and it's pumping down. Oh, we need the mighty, mighty one. God's purpose was so that in these situations and in, in, through these circumstances, God could be glorified. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it to the fullest. Does life mean no problems? We wish. But life is even in the midst of the problem. His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. He can deliver us out of the struggles, but by his grace, his power can influence our heart and strengthen us in our struggles. His grace can come and strengthen us even in our struggles. And he can be seen as the mighty, mighty one. So what are you experiencing today? Are you, are you experiencing the weight of all the struggles? Are you experiencing the waves that are coming in and crashing in? Are you facing pressure or the crushing weight? Maybe the hardships. And I ask you here that are, are in the church or even those of on, online, what are you facing today? Are you facing the struggles in your life? Are you overwhelmed with the weight of despair and discouragement? During this time of COVID-19 lockdown, many, and this is the second time, many are feeling a little bit overwhelmed. They remembered it at the beginning, and then all of a sudden you're pivoting, you're pivoting, you're trying to make it make, and it seems like more people are having this weight, and it's harder this time. It's harder. And sometimes maybe it's because of the, the length of it. It's like this is going on long enough, thank you very much. It's coming too much. I'm despairing. 
even of life itself. Oh, God, I need help. Let's turn to the mighty, mighty one today. Say, God, I need your help today. I need your grace that would come. I believe that Jesus wants us to turn to him, mighty, mighty one in our lives. We don't have to walk in discouragement. We don't have to walk despairingly. Even though we have to put on the mask, and even though you all look funny wearing this funny mask in front, you, you don't know what it looks like from up here, really. But you know what? We don't have to despair because we have lives. God wants to be seen as holy in our lives. He wants to be seen as the one that we go to and put our trust in. The question, though, is this. Will you let him be the mighty one in your life today? Would you allow him? Would you open your heart to say, yes, Lord, I am weak and I need you. Jesus said that he came that we might have life and have it to the fullest. The Bible says that God so loved that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe would have eternal life. And I say this to those who would be online. The question is this, is have you, ever, have you allowed Jesus to become your Savior today? You see, it begins with accepting Jesus as your Savior, turning away from your own way, saying, God, I need you, and opening your heart and allowing Him to be your Savior come and to forgive your sins and to come into your, li into your life. And the questions, uh, the next question is this, are you needing him to be mighty God in your life today? In your struggles, in your situations, in your circumstances? And I ask this not just to those online but to you. Do you need Jesus to be bigger than your problems? Do you need him to be your mighty, mighty one. I'm going to get Mickey to come and we're going to sing one more song. But I'm going to, and you could even do I'm pressed but not cross person. I don't know, it's whichever. I'm just, I'm not sure where you're going with it, that one. But I just want to encourage you here today and those of you who are online, as we sing this song, that you would turn your eyes back to Jesus in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of the waves that would rise up, in the weight, in the weight of this issues, this pandemic. I'm asking you, would you just turn your eyes towards Jesus? Open your heart and allow him to be the mighty, mighty one in your life. Let's just stand. And I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing one more song. Father, I just pray for each one that has been here and online. And I just pray your blessing upon them. I pray, Lord God, that today, Lord, as they are walking through, and I don't know what they're all going through, but you do. You know the struggle. You know the issues that are going on in their lives. You know those who are depressed and discouraged and despondent, that even of life, where life itself seems so overwhelming that they don't know how to get out. God, I pray for them, and I pray, Lord God, that you, by your Holy Spirit, would break through, and as they would open their hearts, that you would be the mighty, mighty one in their life, and that, God, your grace is sufficient, and that they might have strength in you, I pray. Lord, I pray that as, as we sing, as, as we do this, that, God, that we would open our hearts and allow you in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
Well, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Sing that again. Not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord will praise your 